Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Shauna Lynn Panchez, and I'm here with my littlest coworker, Teddy Bear, who's a very good coworker. Um, yeah, so hi, welcome. Um, we're in for a really fun day. I see we have some people in here from New Zealand. Wow, 3.30 a.m. Holy smokes. We have the UK. We have, um, who else do we have in here? I see Paco, hi. I see Tim. I see Creative South fam represent. Yeah, Creative South. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining today. This is so great. I'm glad everyone's coming in. We've got we've got Teddy Bear, we've got myself, we've got a fun day of hand lettering ahead of us. We've also got a whole day's um, schedule ahead of us. A lot of fun things coming up. We've got uh, the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. We have Anna Davis Court doing live drawing and painting. Paul Tranny with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, followed by Jesse Showalter with the UI UX Design. Howard Pinsky with Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, and then a sketch party with Kathleen Martin. So we're in it for a really great day. Um, but yeah, how's everyone doing? What's new? What's going on? It's been a while since I've been on Adobe Live, and now I'm doing it from a bedroom with my dog. I said I would get him on here one day, and here we are. If you are um, watching this on YouTube, make sure if you want to participate in the chat, come over to be.net slash live, which is where we will be doing all of our chatting. Um, today, our plan is to work on a positive quote. So we've been, what I've been doing the last, what was to, today is day nine. So what I've been doing for the last nine days is putting a positive quote on my Instagram every day. And so I wanted to do one today that is collaborative with all of you. We're going to make a postcard that you can send to your friends and family. So let me pull up my screen here. So we've got three options. I see people freaking out over Teddy. Yeah, he's, he's a good bub. I won't hold him the whole time, I promise. I just, he's, yeah, that was the cutest little noise. Um, yeah, so we've got... We've got three quotes. So I figured like I'd have you guys vote one, two, or three. So we've got learn from today, or learn from yesterday, live for today, look to tomorrow, rest this afternoon, Charles M. Schultz. Um, most likely I believe that's just, that's a Snoopy quote. Um, the world always seems brighter when you've just made something that wasn't there before, Neil Gaiman. And finally, one of my favorites, um, not that that should sway your, your vote, but you know happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn off, turn on the light, Albus Dumbledore. So, hey, I see Mark. Mark, is Chrislyn Rebel there? Because if she is, I want chat to wish Chrislyn a very happy birthday. It's her fifth birthday. So just get some like birthday hype going on in the chat if you can, and then we'll do a vote on, on what we're gonna do for this chat. And I'm gonna put the dog down. He says, bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. All right, you go do what you want to do, bud. Here, you can have a cookie. Go get your cookie. Uh, I love all of these. You're making it a tough decision. I know, that's why I'm having you guys pick, because I can't. But I figured, like, when I do this, it'll be some, a little bit of illustration, mostly lettering, um, and I'm going to see how much we can get done, because I'm on here till... Um, 9 a.m. Pacific. So right now, Elvis Dumbledore from Lord of the Rings with the famous quote, use the force, Mario. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you can't do that to me. <laughs> I'm going to see, we're going to see Val pop in randomly and be like, Damn. <laughs> Let's see, we've got votes for three, one. I see a lot of two. I see one, three. Paco hyping Teddy. Yeah, maybe if we can, maybe if I can get him over before the end of the stream, we'll pop him back on in the end. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow too, so you get to see him again. Because really, everyone comes here for Teddy, let's be honest. Right now, he's just chilling on my bed. So we've got two, two, three, three, two. So my plan with this, because we're doing this in Photoshop, um, I'm going to run you through how I set up my, my file. I like to work with artboards. Um, 
I, you can work on just like with, you know, a regular document, but I really like artboards and I'm going to show you guys why. Um, and this is something that every time I've done it, there's at least one person that's like, Poof. so I really think it's a, a good thing that we're going to, um, we're going to show. And it's what I like about art, art boards is especially if I'm doing like a social campaign or I'm doing a lettering campaign and I'm doing something where I need to make sure that everything is cohesive. I can see all of it together and granted sometimes it will make your document huge. Um, but I have done ones when I was making greeting cards, like I'll do all of my greeting card designs in a decently, usually like in the same file. And then I can make sure everything is cohesively the same. Like they all look like they came from my hand and it's not like some random design that doesn't look like mine. Um, there should be an ability to make a poll. There usually is. And I was just, I dropped the ball on giving the mods an option for poll. So I'm seeing a lot of two and a lot of three. Um, a lot of two, a lot of three. So we're voting on the quote idea. Voting on the quote idea. Everyone's just too indecisive. Y'all got this. Two, two, three. Okay, so right now I can at least cross out one because I really want this to be like a fun stream for you guys. I think it's going to be a great time. But right now we're crossing this one out. This one, I missed my line. Um, that one really didn't have as many votes. So now we're between this one and this one. So two or three. Two or three. I'm seeing three. I'm seeing two. And like when I when I start quotes, I generally try to keep them really short. But I really like these so much that I just, they needed to be done. They needed to be done. Like it had to be. Um, I'm seeing three, three, two, two. Guys, you're like split 50-50. You're not helping me here. <laughs> three, 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 three. Okay, I'm seeing more threes. So we're going to go Harry Potter. So I'm going to go grab this one. I'm going to pull it out. Nope, didn't want to do that. I'm going to pull it out of here. I'm going to turn off that layer. And that's, here's our winner. Ta-da. All right, so. How, so before you start, how is everyone today? Like, how are you feeling? What's going on? Are you excited for today? Are you excited you're going to hang out with us all day? Um, just a reminder, if you're watching on YouTube and commenting in the YouTube chat, all the chat excitement is happening on be.net slash live. It would help if I, here, be.net slash live. That's where the party is. So like come join us over on be.net slash live and then you can take part in the chat and we can all have a great time and have a great morning party or afternoon or whatever time it is of the day. For me, it's morning. I'm in, I'm two espressos deep. We're going to keep going. Um, I tried to count the votes. It's literally 50, 50. I know Tim, like they really didn't make it easy here. So I, I made the arbitrary I broke the I broke the tie. We're doing Harry Potter. I've been wanting to do this quote since the beginning, and I think it's time to do it. So we are going to make sure that we. So I'm just, first. I'm going to show you guys like how I set this up, just as a quick refresher. If you don't work in artboards, so you're going to open Photoshop. You're going to go to New. You're going to set up your document. So I'm doing, because we're doing a postcard size, a postcard is generally about four by six without the bleed. If you add in a bleed, which if you don't know what bleed is, it's just if your design goes to the edges and you send it off for print and you don't have bleed, it's going to cut off your design. So when you send it off, you want to be able to um, take your file and then you're going to add just a little bit of edge to each one and then you continue that design around so that none of the important stuff gets cut off. And if for any reason, because as things get printed and there's a big, um, if you're doing like a big run of cards, your design will, will shift ever so slightly. So the bleed allows for you to not lose anything if, if there's any slight bit of printing shift as you're, as you're getting your work done. Um, these were just for the now, we're gonna do them digitally. So we're only doing them four by six. Um, I'm doing, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing a horizontal lockup but I'm going to do a few quick sketches just to see where we're at and then see kind of what's feeling right. And then we'll go through there, but you can see what my really rough sketching process looks like. Cause it's not pretty, but it's really fun to kind of take everything and see how it comes together. 
Um, so what you would do, no joke, two days ago I started listening to that audiobook, the Jim Dale version. I hope it's the Jim, the, the Jim Dale version because that's the best version. Um, <laughs> so we have, um, so I set it up. So I've, I've got mine six by four. And then you have here the option of the orientation. So I could change it and it will automatically switch my, um, my numbers here. But I'm going to do it in a horizontal and then I'm going to check artboards. If I uncheck artboards, it's only going to give me the document and that's it. So I want to check artboards. I work in 350 DPI because I like having the option of making my work larger if necessary. Um, the latest updates to Photoshop in the last couple years really allow for you to scale your work up and really not lose a ton of resolution and what and um, which is really nice. Like it's, I can't like I couldn't take the four by six at three hundred and scale it to th you know three hundred feet um, because I would have to take the DPI down at that point because you know it would it's a lot of a lot of pre press stuff. Um, but I could take my four by six and bump it up to eight by ten and really not lose any any um, quality. So Photoshop's done really well, but I personally just like working in 350 DPI, but you can work in 300. If you're doing it for print, the very minimum, it should probably be about 300. Um, I don't like drawing at, at 72 because it just makes your document too small. You can't do anything but throw it on the web. So I do it at 300 and then I save it down. And that saves me from losing any quality, any initial detail or anything from the get-go. Um, and then I've been working in RGB because Printers can print RGB now, it's nice. Um, CMYK, it'll sometimes take my work and just kind of like really dull it out and flatten it and I just, I don't like it. RGB all the way for me. So you're gonna hit create. So this is what it looks like with an artboard. The artboard itself is transparent. It's got a transparent layer down here. And what happens is if I wanted to say, you know, I draw, I have to use some light colors, my background's dark, so. The nice thing with artboards is I could take this and I could drag it off my artboard. So if I draw something and I'm just like, I'm not sure I really want that, I could pull it off my artboard and just kind of throw it off to the side, kind of like an illustrator, and then work from there. Um, what artboards also allow me to do is I'm going to go to this little icon here that looks like a square with two little, two little horns on it, and these little um, plus signs all pop up. I hit the plus sign and I get another artboard. So I can keep working on, I can do the front and the back of the card in the same file. And if I wanted to change the orientation, I can change the size of this. I can change the orientation. I can go up to the top here of my screen and I can just change it automatically to um, vertical. So it's it's really handy. It's a really, for my, for my purposes, it's a really handy, um, system. So I have my artboard. I've got my, my quote and I'm going to just start doing some very rough sketching. I like to sketch in color because life's too short to not sketch in color. So let's see. I like to start by just kind of emphasizing what words are going to, that like, I think are important. Um, so I think happiness, Found, and I think in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. And I think this is going to be the most important part of the whole thing. So we're going to do our sketch. And if you're, if you're, if you're sketching along, you can use whatever quote you want. You can follow along. You can draw exactly what I'm drawing. Um, and we're just going to keep it very loose to start. I'm going to do what I call skeletons. Um, and that's basically just like writing out my, my quote in a, in a, um, in a rough layout. I don't want to focus yet on, don't forget to move the lower third with your name. Oh, am I supposed to turn that off? Whoops. One second. Do I turn that off for now? Cause I'll turn it off. Yeah, we'll just keep it off for now. Here we go. I'll bring it on later if someone tells me to put it back on. Um, yeah, so we have rough sketch. So I'm going to try horizontal first. I just think that's going to be the, the one to start with. 
what tools am I using outside of Photoshop? Um, I don't really do a ton outside of Photoshop. I like to, I don't know, I kind of like to work solely in Photoshop when I can. Um, the only time that I do anything with lettering outside of Photoshop is if I need to um, vector something out. Sorry, writing and talking at the same time is very hard. Um, and I have a, I have a, a preset already set up in, in Illustrator that I use to convert my lettering into a vector. And it's just, it's set up in such a way that it's got a lot of the little nuances because my, my lettering is very rough on the edges. And I don't like that. I don't like doing just a standard live trace because then it just smooths everything out and it doesn't look like my work anymore. But the hack to fix that is like, if you have, if you, if you do that and you, you lose some detail, you can always go to um, effects. And I think it's under like stylize and we hit roughen. And then you just kind of mess with that and you make sure previews on and you just mess with that till it feels right. Oh, am I using a tablet to draw? Yes, I am using a um, Cintiq 24 inch. Let me see if I can like not screw this up, but like there's a, there's the tablet. It's a, it's a big one. It was a big guy. Um, yeah, so it's, like, I used to use this 13-inch Cintiq. I've been working on a Cintiq for, like, six years now. Um, I also use the iPad Pro when I travel. I used to use uh, Surface, uh, yeah, Surface Pro. And then last year I got very jealous of all my friends that were just, you know, popping out their, their, um, their iPads at, at Creative South and went home and I bought an iPad Pro and I never looked back. Um, but you know, happiness. And I'm actually looking, the more I look at this and the way that this is rendering out, this might end up being, this might end up being a vertical layout and I may change that, which is, let me do that now. So all I have to do is select artboard. I just realized my, my camera's in front of, let me, move myself over so you can see my there so you artboard and you're just gonna go up to the top you're gonna make sure that the artboard option is selected and then you can just boop so now I need to scale this down because I've lost my quote part of it but like see how easy that is and how convenient that is is great Good morning, to create a font in Illustrator. How do I add it to a font foundry? Uh, I'm not really the person to ask that. Um, a foundry is your, your, um, your company. Like, like you wouldn't just add it to like, like monotype as a foundry. Like you can't just add your font to monotype. Um, the, you can upload it though. You can upload it to places like Creative Market and sell it and stuff. Um, just make sure if you've made the typeface, just make sure that like you've current it, you've done all the little idiosyncrasies of things, like double check everything so it looks really nice when everyone types it out. Um, yeah. Hold on guys, let me just finish writing like part of this and then I'll add a ton more questions. I just can't like, I will make spelling mistakes if I if I don't concentrate. In the, and I'm gonna yank this over using the lasso tool and turn it a little, even in the darkest. of times if one teddy if one only remembers Turn on the light. 
Okay. Now I can continue. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I have done that before where I have, I've been writing out my, my quote and I start writing what I'm saying instead of the quote. So I have to be very careful when I'm doing, doing that so I don't make spelling mistakes or any kind of other things. And I'm going to rework this a little bit, kind of pull things around. Um, and we'll see that in just a moment. Um, but someone asked, have you, uh, Mad, was that Mads? He asked, um, have you ever used a Wacom Intuos? Am I the only one that can't get a smooth, even line on that? Because probably the drawing surface and screen are not the same place, but I can on paper. Okay, I used to. Um, I started with a Wacom Intuos. It, I don't even think it was called Intuos when I started with it. I was, um, I think like 13, and the first time I saw it was a Campbell's Soup commercial for Soup at Hand. And the woman was drawing, drinking her soup, and art was coming up on the computer or on her computer screen. And I was like, I want that. And, um, bless my parents. They found one and got me one for Christmas. And so I learned to do digital drawing via the welcome into us. I used to do mouse drawing before that. I can't do mouse drawing anymore. I'm just like, I'm not that coordinated. And, um, but I did use a welcome into us for probably a good 10 years before I switched to a Cintiq. And the only thing that the Cintiq did was make my work a little more accurate. Um, what you can do in terms of a smooth line is if you're drawing and you're having trouble, go up to smoothing up here um, when you have your brush selected and just up it to like 10 is usually enough depending. But if you want like a really smooth line, if you see there's like a little, it's going to be hard. Let me see if I can zoom in. I feel like it's gonna be really hard to see otherwise, but there's a little, there's a little line that's dragging this. And I don't know if it's a, it's pink because my life is pink. Um, but there's a little line that drags it. So even if my hand is shaking, it is still gonna create a smooth line. So just turn on smoothing and that'll make a big difference in how you feel you have control of your of your work um i can see this comes natural to you not at all actually um i've been drawing for a long time but in the grand scheme of things like i i've had to work very hard to get decent at lettering um and i've seen a lot I've, a lot of my old stuff i i come across every now and then and it's 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 not great it's not great. I've I've spent a lot of time um, really honing in my my uh, my style, and I think that has been something that's been very fortunate about my working from home um, because I did have that ability uh, to do. I don't normally do this. I started working from home because I had been fired from an agency job and so I just figured that's the time to really f focus on my lettering and I that's when I started and it took about three years of me really working in lettering to kind of finally figure where my voice was and then it was another year and a half to two years after that when I finally figured out where my style was laying and in honestly like style is not your lettering necessarily. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Um, style is not necessarily like your lettering. It's how you render it. So you might draw the exact same thing that I'm drawing, but how your hand renders it is going to be different from how my hand renders it. And that's where the difference is. And that's where your style comes from. It's going to be how your hand renders it. Um, I'm not saying copy people that are out there. I think copying is great for learning. It's especially great if you're trying to learn how to do, like say an R and you, you know, you really like, oh, I still have smoothing on hand. Um, you really like like an R somebody does. So learning kind of how that person renders that R and practicing it and trying it and keeping at it and, and redrawing and like look at it, draw it, put it away, try drawing it again without reference. And that's kind of how you're gonna come across that, that very nice little idiosyncrasy of your hand and your style from your hand to your um, hand to your pen. I 
I still like to hand draw on pencil and paper and then scan and trace in Illustrator. It's a little redundant, but it works. No, it's not. I think that's great. Um, it saves you a lot of time in the long run because you it'll allow you to really have control of what you're what you're working with okay I like this this is feeling pretty good so I'm gonna duplicate this because I want to keep my original layer I'm gonna turn off these guys I'm gonna bump this to the top we're gonna I'm just gonna group these just so they're together and all and then I'm gonna scale I'm gonna scale this okay so I'm gonna figure out illustration later. Um, if we have time in the in this in this stream, I will continue pushing it. But I think right now it's important to start doing the lettering itself. Um, Logan says hi too. Your brush is awesome. Hi Logan. Thank you. I'm working on brushes for fun. I like ones that look kind of like pen or kind of like pencil. Um, so what I do in this instance now is I take my opacity down and I grab a darker color. So I'm gonna use blue. Why not? I could use a little, do I like that color? I have to commit, like I have to really like the color so that I can commit to drawing it in it for the next little while. Yeah, I like that one. I like that, okay. So I've got a couple of brushes that I'm working on but I haven't um, released them yet. Um, I would recommend if you're looking for something in a similar style, check out Kyle, um, Kyle Webster's um, brush. He's got the dry media. You can get them if you go up to your brush settings here and you can go to get more brushes. That'll pull up Kyle's and then you can download them and load them in. So he's had, he has a few that'll, that will mimic kind of the same that I'm doing. That one. This one's a little heavier, so I like that. I'm gonna bring down the size. Use your watercolor statement. I'm still copying those later on. Yeah, I mean, oh, there's a lot of us that say that, and I think it's a great way to learn things. Like I'm doing a lot of that now. I'm. I mean, if you think about it, copying is is their studies. Um, the masters did it. They did studies of prior masters, and I mean, it's a thing. Like you, you do your your studies. You figure out how something works, how someone did something, and then you take the things you like about that and you find a way to put it into your own process. Also going back to like, I used to stream for Adobe when they were on Twitch. So back to our Adobe days, make sure you're saving, make sure you're drinking water, sip, flip, stretch. Right now I'm rendering, I'm rendering this out just in a sans serif blocky type because I think this might benefit from a serif on it, but I want to, I want to, I want to see kind of like how this looks to start and then I can add the details later. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, just another reminder, if you're watching on YouTube and you're talking in the YouTube chat, um, I will not see any of that. If you want to chat with me, hop on be.net slash live. That's where the party is. That's where it's fun. Unless you're using cloud documents, then you don't have to save. Okay, that is true. I'm really bad about using cloud documents. I use them when I'm in Fresco and that's about it. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I like to keep, I keep all my stuff on Dropbox <laughs> just cause it's the easiest, easiest thing for me. And that's where I've had everything housed for years and I'm stubborn. <laughs>
All right, so I'm gonna back out of this just so you can see like like what I what I will more than likely do, and I'm gonna do this right now so I don't forget is I'm gonna tweak it. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit. I'm gonna take I'm gonna bump it over just a hair. No, that was too far. Um, one of the things you'll see that I do is I I don't measure the exact middle because I'm very much on doing optical measuring. So it I want it to visually feel correct, even if it's not mathematically correct. And that is just so that when you look at it, your eye doesn't automatically look at it and go, something's off and I don't know what. So you do an optical, you do optical measuring just so that it feels visually correct. Um, Is it good to use capital and small letters at the same time? Will this make the design good? I mean, it's a personal preference. I use capitals and lower cases and I intermix them. I also use um, serif and I use blocky letters and cursive at the same time. And it's just sort of what I've done. Um, yeah, auto recovery has, has saved my butt a lot. Um, my computer has crashed on me a couple times in the past and uh, it's, it's saved me so hard. <laughs> saved me so much. I open my document. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I only lost 10 minutes of work. Um, artists don't copy, they steal. Some people take this quote and think you copy and it becomes yours. It actually means you need to put your own style in it and just, or it's just a copy. No, that's exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you copy to learn. You don't post what you copy. But copying to learn a trick is essentially working to steal that trick, but taking it and modifying it to your process. So like I might really like an R somebody did in their um, piece and I will draw the R, I'll, I'll draw exactly how they did it and then I will get rid of my um, my reference and I will redraw it and redraw it until it looks like me. Like it looks like my work. Um, I just joined the session where you were talking about how it took you three plus years just establish your style really inspiring. Yeah, like it doesn't happen overnight. Like it takes years and there's a lot of people that they expect it to happen in five minutes and that's not the case. Like you have to be willing to fail and fail hard. Um, if you're not failing, you're not learning. And that applies to anything. So how is everyone today? Where are you all tuning in from? Because I know we have we've had some people join in, and we had um, we've got people from like all over the U.S. But we also had someone from New Zealand. I think I someone said the U.K. See, at this point, it's a lot easier for me to draw and and um, talk at the same time because my skeleton is there. So I don't have to think about what the letter is. And um, so now it's literally just drawing the letter. And I always tell people like lettering is not writing. Lettering is the art of drawing a letter. It's illustration. You know, this is, this is writing. This is lettering because you're thinking about the shape of letters not the letter itself. Yeah, Mark is from Bermuda. It's also his daughter's birthday, so say happy birthday to her, please. Um, watching these streams helps so much. It really does. Like, it's really, I always love, um, I tune in and I do what I call the work and lurk. And I basically, I'm working on my own stuff and I'm just sitting and I'm listening and I'm watching what people do versus like, engage. I don't really engage in chat often. I do sometimes. Um, but if I'm really in a, in a concentration mode, it's just nice because it makes me feel like I'm working alongside somebody else. Is it possible to do lettering without the tablet you're using now? Would it be No, it's possible. Um, I know people who use Intuos tablets. I know people who use mice. Like they use their mouse. Um, a lot of the people that do that do a lot of 
of vector lettering in Illustrator. That's not my forte. Um, but I know a lot of people who do that because it allows them better control. Um, I started doing lettering with an Intuos tablet. And I'm now on a Cintiq, but the Intuos was how I learned. And um, I, it's possible to do it. And you could even, my first lettering pieces, I didn't even use... Um, I didn't even use a tablet. I had a tablet, but I didn't really use it. I did everything by hand. I did it by hand, and then I got tracing paper, and I traced it, and then I scanned it, and then I selected the color. It was usually like I'd trace it in like black ink, scan it into my computer, go into Photoshop, select all the black, copy and paste it into a document, and invert the colors. Um, so if you like on my Behance profile, I don't know if it's still there. It might be, but at the very bottom, there's um, a poster for an event called The World of Foot, and all the lettering on there was done by hand on paper, scanned, traced and scanned, and then it was just selected and inverted in Photoshop. I didn't, I mean, honestly, I didn't, I don't follow a lot of typography uh, rules because I think it's, I treat lettering more like illustration. Um, there are instances where you should know typography. Like if you're doing work like um, like Kevin Cantrell, Jason Karn, anyone that does vector lettering and does things that look like, like the vintage labels and stuff, like the really intricate stuff, I think it's important to understand kind of what you're doing and what you're working with. And there are books. And off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is, but I it's a black cover. It's got white and red letters on it and if someone knows what it is please chime in because I I can't remember but it's a it's a book all about typography and I had it in school and it's still relevant and it's still really good um so if someone knows that book like please chime in because I don't I don't remember it um but it like you can go on on like even just on B like here on Behance um Adobe Live there are people that, I don't know if we've had anyone build typefaces on there, but if you watch the branding streams, um, anything with and anything with branding or layout, you'll learn a lot of, of um, a lot of basic typography through that. Um, so that's like a great way to learn. The, what was the other question? There was something. If you're getting an error, did you re did you reload the screen? Um, where was the question? I saw there was one, and I can't. Tuning in from Orlando. Woo! O Town represent. That's all the that okay. That was just that was it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I don't generally follow typography. I work. I do Kern, and I. I, I focus on the kerning for sure because like it'll look really weird if I did um, if I drew an H and then I drew the A right here like and then the P over here like so there is some basic basic typography that I follow um, but it's not it's like my kerning won't be perfect in, it, with these letters like the kerning will not look perfect but I'm treat like I said I treat this more um, like I treat it more like illustration and I think more about the shapes and how things fill in the negative space and how things look visually versus the um, versus how I do this on uh, like how I would do this if I were working with with strict type but I used to work in a in an agency where I made signage for um, a fashion boutique store and I did work strictly with with type in that and we always used these these typefaces that were just they were from like Defont. Um, this was pre Adobe fonts if I had Adobe fonts back then I could have ruled the world um, <laughs> but we'd use things off like Defont because my boss at the time was like I want something frilly and 
So I'd have to find something frilly and I would have to sit in these and they would not be kerned well. They wouldn't be tracked well, kerned well. They would just be like, I made this, boom. And so I would have to sit there and I would have to manually track every one of them and redo it and kind of make it space really well. And then two hours before we sent it to print, she'd come in and go, I'm not feeling that font anymore. Can we change it? Thank goodness for InDesign because I had um, I had character styles set up so I could just go into my character style to change the typeface very quickly and then I would have to sit and like quickly current everything again. Um, but I got a very I got very well acquainted with type during during that time. So if you ever need a chance, if you ever want to like do more typography and get really acquainted with it, like grab like go on um like public domain book sites and get like an old an old public domain book and then take that and try to um, lay it out in InDesign, like lay it out really nicely in InDesign and play with the typefaces and see what feels right and play with the drop caps and all kinds of things. Like just really have fun with it. Um, I have two bamboos and the new OS from Apple doesn't seem to recognize them. Oh no, have you gone on the Wacom website and downloaded the new drivers? Because I find if I have issues, it's usually a driver issue from Wacom. Um, who knows for joining us? Um, ah, chat, you're running so fast, guys. Just so happened to stumble upon this. This is very similar to a project I'm about to start. Very nice, Arnold. We need we need that. Um, we need more positivity in the world. Yeah, what's everyone's favorite font? Like mine is I I I bounce around. Um it depends on my mood and what I'm doing, but my go-to right now has been uh Zen New, which you can find in Adobe fonts, and it's really nice because there's a ton of weights and italics. Um so it lets me do a lot of really nice hierarchy stuff. Welcome to the Photoshop stream where we're talking about typography. <laughs> um Oh no, that's too high. No, no, go down. Um, yeah, so if you're just joining us, we're creating a positive quote. Um, it's going to be a positive quote um, virtual postcard that you can send to your friends and family. And it's great. Um, it's going to be fun. We're going to, if we have time, we'll do the back. Um, but first I want to at least like lay out the lettering because we have 45 minutes to go. Oh no. Oh no, can I do this? Can I make this happen? <laughs> I have a friend who is very much into papyrus and every time she wants to use it, I'm, I, I request her not to use papyrus. I'm like, please no, I will find you something that is so much prettier. <laughs> so here's where I'm actually going to play around with adding in um, some calligraphy or some like script work. Um, I love to I love to like randomly mix it into my into my work and into my into my lettering in general um I think it just it adds just a little bit of fun and unexpected like a little visual unexpected like boom if I can't think of something I'd describe it in a sound so that's how where we're at um it's just it's just like a little little visual excitement just someone doesn't expect to see it and um and I do try really hard not to deviate too far from the from changing widths. I like to keep my widths pretty much the same um, within the lettering. And if you join me tomorrow, we're doing thirty six days of type. Um, Tomorrow, I think, is supposed to be the number one. I'm not doing that. I am significantly behind on 36 days of type because I decided to just take my, my time. Um, so I'm still deciding on the letter I'm going to do tomorrow, but I'm thinking F. I think F would be really fun. I think F would be a lot of fun, actually. I'm stuck on D currently. I was trying to do a, do a duck-themed one, and it's just not working, so I'm thinking I have to do something deer-themed because I'm mixing in a lot of illustration. I'm doing them kind of like children's book letters the first three I think are up on my behance all right let's see how this is looking so far okay so 
right now, this right here, I don't like. I don't like how there's so much space between here. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna draw this as a lowercase t. That's the wrong, wrong thing, there we go. I'm gonna draw it as a lowercase t because I don't like, I like to fit my letters kind of like a puzzle. And I just, I don't like when it doesn't fit. Like I, there was, there's too much negative space there. And there is a typography word for that and for the life of me, I can't remember it right now, but we're gonna run with this. Um, if you know it, chime in, you will be my savior. So that feels better, but now I have to, I can drag this over. And this is my normal process. Like I will, I will nudge and move things until the cows come home. And I like, I don't like how that, I'm gonna have to play around a little bit because I don't like how the N and the R are kind of butting up to each other, but I also don't want to end up with like a ton of even, you know, an open space. So this will get re reorganized a little bit uh, later on, but I want this to pop up a little higher. And then that can go here. No, not kerning. There's actually a word for the negative space. Um, I don't think it's kerning. There's there's an actual like word for that that negative space, um, and it's something. It's like a visual thing, like like how there's rivers when you do typography. Like you don't want your um, the ends of your type to do rivers. There's one for like if you squint your eyes and you see a big opening, you don't like it. like it's not good. Sound effects are the best way to describe visuals, yeah. My family makes fun of me because if I can't think of something, generally it's just sound effects, and they're, it, they're all now doing it. Um, but I've that's just always, sound effects make it easy. And you don't realize like how much you do it until someone like, until someone points it out. But like I've done things where I'm like, the zing thing. I don't know, the thing that, the zing, and my family, I don't know what you're talking about. You'll figure it out. So I'm just doing some little bit of, someone says, is this thing on? It should be, it should be. Try refreshing your stream. Because it's live on my end. I'm singing. Yeah, okay, so I'm not wrong. Like, there is an actual word for it. And I just, I don't know. Is it a counter? I don't think it's a counter. Because I think a counter is the open space in like a, like a C or an O. If I remember. I think, yeah, someone figure it out for me, please. Because now it's going to bug me all day long. Um, if you're just joining us, though, I'm going like, to quickly go pull up the, the schedule. We've got a really great day ahead of us. Um, Right now you're with me, hand lettering basics, and you've got the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val, and then you've got Drawing and Painting with Anna Davis Court, you've got the Daily Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Paul Tranny, Adobe Live UX UI Design um, with Jesse Showalter, Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky, and the Sketch Party with Kathleen Martin, which I will more than likely come join for that because that sounds like fun. Um, but yeah, so. We're back. But so I'm doing a positive quote. We're using a Harry Potter quote because I have been, been pushing to use this. Um, part of the project that I'm doing is I'm, I've teamed up with a company called Go Gorilla Media. And so we, we share different quotes every day to try to figure out which one would be the best one. And I've been pushing for this one for the last week. And today I win. I also am getting it done nice and early in the day. Okay, so you see what's happening here? I just started drawing a lowercase c or a lowercase e, and I'm gonna have two right here, and it's gonna be too repetitious. So I'm gonna do an uppercase here just just to switch it up. S, there's no saving that, unfortunately, unless I did. No, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna read like an S. 
in the darkest of times. And then we're down to if only. <gasps> it's Anna. We still have to do our Harry Potter stream, FYI. We got to do that. Got to make that happen. We have, we should have time now. I want to draw Dolores Umbridge so badly. I have an idea in my head for that piece. I just have to like, it's one of those where I started to sketch it out and I was like, my skills aren't quite there. I got to wait a couple weeks and see, see if they, if they do it. I see people talking about about lig ligatures. I love ligatures. I love making ligatures happen. We do. I found a program we can use. Is it Zoom? Because I've been using that like crazy. We've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of group kumbaya time. yeah we need to do that because I feel like that would be a lot of fun to play with okay I've got three lines to go and 30 minutes can I do it would you share the hardware you're using I'm using um I have a Cintiq 24 uh, HD tablet the only reason I updated I upgraded from a 13 inch to the 24 inch is because there is a stand available for this and my posture is really bad when it comes to drawing. I have a bad habit of laying on my on my tablet and like drawing like this, where I'm just like, I don't know, for some reason I think like the closer I get to my tablet, the more I zoom in when it should be the opposite. Um, but so my posture is really bad when it comes to drawing. Um, so I have a 24 inch Cintiq and I'm using Photoshop and then I'm using brushes that I made myself. Um, if you want that, I can show you. I used, I made just a random mark, I scanned it in and I used um, shape dynamics. I adjusted the angle jitter, some scattering, threw in some texture I made. I have a dual brush and I'm not sure which one it's connected to. Oh, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Where is it, where is it? It's connected to another one that I scanned in and I have set to linear height and I added in noise. If I take the noise off, it doesn't make a ton of difference. It just makes it a little grainier. So I just like, I just make it and make it happen until it, ha you know, I just draw until I'm, I, I work with it until I'm happy with how it looks. Um, I have to pull over if one only. So it's, it's still not perfect, but like, I think that's okay. Oh, this is gonna look so fun when it's done. I'm also a big proponent of like playing with the heights and the, um, am I using the HP stylus that came with it? No, I've got the, the Wacom pen. So it's just the, the Wacom Pro pen that comes with it. If one only, and then I've, I have to, you can see as I've drawn, it's gotten longer and longer. And so now like remembers is up here, but I have to draw it down here. Oh, I'm gonna, that is not even gonna fit. Snap. Let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna redraw this. I'm gonna redraw remembers and see if I can do it like a little more cutesy. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take the opacity down and I'm gonna do larger and then what I'll do is I'll make sure this like kind of fits in 
in this space as I go along it. This is me thinking in, in real time. And then we have to turn on the gut. Type in adding cat pie s high pay with stem bowl serif send the terminal anyone else fine if these cuts postpone because mm. still not I was burned out completely had to take a break now I'm starting again hope it doesn't turn into a burnout the best thing you can do is if you feel burnout coming on like stop step away and just I'll, like give yourself permission to to do something else that makes you happy like mine currently is playing Animal Crossing. Um, unfortunately, like it's very hard to avoid burnout and burnout, it, it just, it sucks. There's, I mean, there's no other way to describe it. It just, it sucks. Um, and I could feel like I felt it last night. I just, I realized my, my brain hadn't had any kind of, um, I hadn't really taken any kind of mental break for a while. Um, where I just didn't do anything. And so I went and I turned on my Switch and I played, I just played um, Animal Crossing until I passed out. Okay, so here's our, our updated. I'm going to drop that down a little. I'm going to pull this back. So now that it's gotten longer, it actually fits our, um, it fits our canvas a little bit better as a result. And I think that's, that's really good in this instance. Um, I have to format it for a square later, um, but that's still doable. I think your layers is just gonna yank both layers together without putting them in a group. Um, but yeah, so like it's, it's gonna fit this format a lot better so that when we send it to our friends, it's gonna, it's gonna look really nice. Like there's a little bit of room for some um, illustration and I'm not sure not sure what is going to happen with it um so there's another one oh all the work and bad posture yeah there's a book you can get that it's like a graphic a, a, a graphic novel almost um about exercises for the artist um and i really ought to read it but it's one of those where it, it talks about like you know taking your arm out and like pulling back your hand to stretch everything here um exercises for your back exercises for your neck for your hands and I think it's really important that like as creatives we do take care of our bodies um because I was holed up last week with a with a really bad muscle spasm in my back um because I don't take care of myself so take it from me take care of yourself because it's it's not fun it's not fun when you when you suddenly can't do what you love to do like just like laying on in bed was was painful. It was not a good day. Yeah, the hovering art director is kind of thing. Yeah, I'm I'm curious like how many of you are are working from home, how you're liking it cuz I've done work from home for years. Um but even in the current even in the current climate, it's been a little hard to find the motivation to do things but I'm making a schedule helps doing things like this helps it's been fun being able to give people um like advice for working from home because I like yeah I like it it's nice for me it gives me a lot of time with my family um I heard a story of a dog that sprained his tail because he was so happy his family was home that he didn't stop wagging it and he sprained it. My dog has worked from home for me with me since since the beginning. Cause after I got fired, I adopted him a couple months later. So his gotcha day is on April 6th. So I will be celebrating his little gotcha day. But I'll have had him for seven years at that point. And he's eight now. Yeah, he's eight, so. 
Currently, he's just laying on his, his throne of blankets. How are we doing on time? We're still good. We're still good. My issue with it is when I'm off work, it doesn't feel the same since I've been home. Have, are you able to like separate your area? You know, like I work, like I work in my bedroom currently. Um, when I lived in an apartment, I had a half wall that was like, that was my physical separation. Like when I left that area and I walked into my living room, like I was done. Here I have half of this room is my bedroom. The other half is, is my studio. So it is, I get that it's harder to kind of turn off because my computer is always in sight. Um, but if there's a way that you can put up some kind of, some kind of barrier or do some sort of like daily ritual where once you do that, you're done for the day, that might help you mentally turn off. If you are talking over in YouTube, we're chatting on Behance. Come join us there. That's where the party is. That's where the, that's where the cool kids are hanging. BE.net slash live. Okay, I'm so close. One word to go and then Albus Dumbledore. Oh yeah, that was my favorite thing about when I started working from home was I didn't have to deal with traffic ever again. Well, I did. I did have to deal with traffic, but not on the on the regular basis that I was. Um, if anyone, I know we had someone in Orlando in the chat. Um, I four there is the worst. It's their their interstate that is always under construction, and I I loved not having to deal with I four. Because when I did work um, at an agency there, it took me 15 minutes to get to work in the morning and 45 minutes to get home at night. Just because of how bad traffic was. Do I ever use the pen tool? Not, no. <laughs> no, I don't like it. It's, it's too structured for my work. Like I'm very loose with my, with my compositions and the pen tool would just make everything too rigid for me. I'll use it sometimes like if I have to cut a model out from a background because I still do photo retouching at times. Um, if I have to if I have to do photo retouching, I will use it. But even then, I generally just kind of wing it with a with the brush. I have like a masking brush I use. That's not how you spell Dumbledore. Oh, I am ashamed of myself. This might be, ooh. I wonder if I can render it out. This will be something that probably ends up happening off stream, but as like a as like a visual like border drawing a patronus. I kind of want to try that. It won't happen cuz I I've got like 20 minutes, but we're in I want to get this rendered, but oh, that would be so Usually I work full time in the office at an agency. Work from home is not for the faint of heart. It's taken me a long time to adjust the product productivity curve. Yeah, it really does. And it's, I mean, even the first week of everything going, you know, everything happening in the world, like it was, it was an adjustment too. And I work from home. Um, but suddenly all my friends were available and, and chatting online. And I was like, oh, I can chat with my friends now. Um, so it is, it is very, I'm using a pen, not my finger. Um, it's, it is very hard to to really adjust the productivity 
um, of everything. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go down here to, there's a little um, button that looks like a circle. It's a circle with half light, half dark. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do solid color. And I'm going to pull this to like a nice navy. Because if I do, if I do manage to do this Patronus that I want to do, like I want to have this really nice light blue painted over it. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so excited. You have no idea. Um, but for now, we're going to render this out. And I'll render out in this pretty blue because I do like it. Also, I don't name my layers. Don't judge. Um, do I have coffee left? I still have coffee left. Oh, it was cold. That did not taste good. I let my espresso get too cold, guys. Um, on is missing. To turn on the light. Oh, you're right. Good catch. So that's what happens when I talk and I, <laughs> when I talk and work at the same time, I make mistakes. So let's uh, move that over. It's an easy fix, thankfully. So I just have to turn down, this, take the size down. Take the size down, shift it over, turn a little bit. And we're just gonna pull, ah! No, 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 no. This is a weird glitch that has been happening and I don't know, I think it's my keyboard causing it, but it like doesn't let go. And then it drags. What is going on? Something is selected, I think. No? What's going on? Okay, there we go. My walk-in was glitching. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Layer 425 is a name too. Yes, it is. Yeah, if I have to, like, if I have to give something to a client, if I need to provide them with the with the original file, I do. I do layer my my files, my layers. I number name my layers. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and it it gets very tedious. Like I had a project recently where I had to do twenty five pieces for my client, and it was it, it took me forever because I didn't name as I was going along, which was my biggest mistake. So I had to go in and I had to rename all of my layers. Um, I do make all my own brushes. A lot of these, a lot of the styles you can you can get with Kyle's brushes. Um, I just there's like little itty bitty things that I like to pull into my work. So I generally like I make my own for a lot of things. Um, but I do I do use a lot of other people's too. It just depends. I need to find a way to favorite and like mark which ones are my favorite. Isn't it better to flatten everything when delivering? It depends on your client. Um, when I when I deliver files, oftentimes they want they want it layered if they need the original file. Otherwise, I can provide them with a um, flattened transparent TIFF. So, like when I did work for Seventeen Magazine a couple years ago, I provided them with transparent TIFFs for the. Um, for their magazine because they it was just like little lettering spots like little editorial spots and it was just like this big and it was just they just needed the file itself transparent in order to bop into their pop them into their into their spread um but what happened was they needed to they they didn't need to um they didn't need the the, the psd files for that they just needed a flattened tiff but sometimes if a client 
is putting something together for an ad and they need to be able to shift things around, then we, I give them the, the PSD file and it's a good faith thing where I tell them like, you're not going to mess up my files. And a lot of artists actually will put in a clause in their contract that says, if I provide you my PSD, I get to approve it. If you make any changes, I get to approve it before you send it to final. Um, Hi, Laz, how are you? I can't even spell my name. How are you so good at lettering? Oh, I've, I've made mistakes during this whole process. I've made mistakes. Um, oh, thanks, Anna. Yeah, I like to make, I love making my own. What's a masking brush? It's just like a, the one I have that I made is just like a soft edge round brush. And I use it for um, masking people when I do photo editing. Just because you don't want a super hard edge, otherwise it looks like they were clipped out. Because I used to, have, used to have to move models onto different backgrounds when I also worked in that fashion agency and change colors of their clothing. And I learned a lot of things. <laughs> Outline fonts, yes, yes, that is a big one. If you are gonna provide a client with anything that's got, a, got type in it, um, you do want to outline their outline the fonts because if they need to open the file and they can't they don't have it on their computer it's it's gonna look bad it's gonna look real bad oh yeah no if you are on YouTube come to be hands that's where the cool kids are I won't see any comments over on a over on Behance. I'm only seeing the, the chat on, or I won't see them on YouTube. I'll see the, I only see the chat on you, on, eh. guys, it's been a long morning. Um, <laughs> I only see the chat on Behance. I can't see YouTubes. So we're all chatting over in Behance because that's where the party is. We've had an influx of people. Hello, friends. Hello, come join us. You're coming in late. You missed my dog. He'll be back tomorrow morning. And if you're just joining in too, stick around because we have, like, there's a full schedule for today and it's going to be great. Yeah, I like this blue on this navy. I might, I might add a little more saturation to this, to this navy, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm using a um, Wacom Pro Stylus. Yeah, Kyle, is, Kyle has made a very, very big brush resource. Very big brush resource. I used his watercolor ones on my best friend's wedding invitations a few years back. Um, and it was, it looked like, I mean, they looked like watercolor. It was, it was incredible how, how good the brushes are. And now with Fresco, I, I don't paint well with watercolor. I really don't. But I will go into Fresco and I will play with those live brushes because I'm just like, Look at how it goes. Look at it, it, it. Look at it mix and, um. Yeah, I get I get very I nerd out over really good brushes and like Fresco's watercolor brushes are so good. They're so good. Is that a chalk brush? It's, it's an I don't know brush. Um, it's one I made. I can show you the settings. Um. The tip shape is just, it's a circle that I made. Cause what I do is I will just, um, if you need brushes, you go up to open your brush panel. You're going to go over to this little, little, um, cogs, little tool sign, and you're going to hit get more brushes and you'll find all of them. Um, the one I am using is a brush I made. What I do is I just take a pencil or a pen and I just make random marks on paper take a picture with my phone and then I pull it onto the computer and then I select the, um, I up the contrast so you can really see the black marks. And I use those to make brushes. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll do a crash course on that because it's, it's so much easier than you think. Um, but so I did like 50 something marks one day and I imported them all. So I use these, um, they're just called like sampled brush or SP brush. Um, so I use this one that is just like a marker tip and I, I adjust the angle jitter so that the edges um, change a lot. And then I do, um, I play with scattering. There's no, nothing's here 
nothing none of the scattering here is actually on i just have it selected um but the texture i just i made a, a splotchy texture and i use that and i have it set to hard mix excuse me so um you get this really nice texture in there and i can take down the flow and that will adjust how the brush looks so depending what i'm trying to um trying to achieve i will do that we're coming down to our last 10 minutes 10 minutes how much will i get done in 10 minutes we'll never know and there's also a really fun trick that i learned from kyle webster years ago um, you go up to your brush mode so up here in the top left it says normal tap that hit clear and your brush is now an eraser but I learned that um, on one of Kyle's streams years ago and it was the the most useful thing ever because if you ever need to erase something I use a hard edge eraser and it like if I use the hard edge you can tell um, so if I need to need to remove anything I just set it to clear unless unless it's something that I have to like fully redraw um who said hi who said hi David hello Shauna how are you and how is Teddy I'm great I am two espressos into my morning um and Teddy is great he is on my bed he was in chat earlier well he was on the screen earlier today he can't talk he can't type he's got no thumbs um but if you tune in tomorrow morning, he'll be he'll join us first thing again. Right now, I don't want to get up and go grab him. He's all cozy on the bed. He's on his on his throne of blankies. Every blanket I own, it ultimately becomes his. He doesn't even question. He just takes. This is mine now. It's probably the case with most dogs. We've got four four in my house right now. Um, got a golden retriever, two Yorkies, and my little my little Shih Tzu, and it's a lot of dogs. I don't recommend it. It's a lot of dogs. But I like this because it's just I like this brush because it's like it's a lot of really nice textures. Like when I pan out, it almost looks kind of like it was painted on. Um, what does hard mix do? It's, it, it, how do I explain it? How do I explain it? How do I explain it? Um, I can show you. It's probably easier if I show you. Um, so if you look at this down here, like different settings will make the brush do different things. So that's like linear burn, um, multiply. And if you do that, you have to adjust these settings and stuff up here too. I generally default to hard mix because it gives me a really nice crunchy texture and I am all about like just some really nice solid textures. Oh, I need my sketch back. I don't know what I'm drawing. There we go. Yeah, leave the bumper be. Yeah, join in tomorrow morning, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be back on here doing... um. 36 days of type today we did a we all picked a quote based I gave an option of three different ones so we had a Charlie Brown quote a Neil Gaiman quote and then um, Harry Potter and Harry Potter won much to my joy and if you if you check out hope I'm thinking later on today is when I will um, I'll be able to finish this later today hopefully and so my goal is get it get it posted up it'll, it'll more than likely post up tomorrow um, before my stream because I don't want to rush it but we'll have a really pretty finalized piece and I'm planning on drawing in the Patronus if not the full Patronus like the you know waves of it To toggle between painting and erasing with the same brush, hold down. Oh, hang on. Let me try this because this is new to me. Where is this? 
Where would I find it? I don't see it on my keyboard. Nope, that goes through my brushes. Uh, I feel like I'm learning a new thing and I have no idea where it is. I will have to find that later. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna drop the size of this down a little bit. Um, all right, we got just a few more minutes. Does anyone have any last questions before I before I gotta wrap this up? Got about five minutes before I have to wrap everything up. But make sure you stay tuned because we have Voodoo Val up next with the Photoshop Daily Challenge and followed by Voodoo Val is Anna Davis Court who is hanging out in this chat and she's gonna do some beautiful illustration work. It's like above tab. Oh. <gasps> what? What? My life has changed. I learned a thing. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. Apparently Anna didn't either. I do have a US keyboard. I don't have a US keyboard. Oh, okay. Well, if for those of us with US keyboards, it's above the tab. It's above tab. It's the one, the little, the little tilde. And uh, you see, it's, it's the button that looks like this. <laughs> I also talk in, in illustrations. Magic. Um, let's see. Any last questions, anybody? We've got about two minutes before I got to wrap everything up. Um, unfortunately, I wish I was able to finish this on stream. I can't usually, I'm not very good about doing an illustration in an hour and a half. It takes me longer. But you're seeing a, the piece in progress. And generally what, what would happen if it's for a client, I do more than one sketch. If it's for myself, sometimes I know in my head what I see and like what I want it to look like. And so I'll do just a very base, very, very base sketch. Um, just, just to get it on paper. But even then, usually that's very rough and I, and I do a lot of tweaking in between. What key for non-US keyboard? That would definitely be a, a Tim question. Adobe Kadabra, I like it. Um, what did I learn today? I learned that, I learned that, that, ah, shoot. Um, I learned that, that this key toggles your, your um, brush that you're working on between normal and using it as an eraser. I've been working in Photoshop for years and I never knew that. And it's so great. I'm going to use that from here on out. But if you need to do that physically, you go up to here to um, your brush mode and you would select clear. And that will also turn the brush you're using into an eraser. All right, so I gotta start wrapping up, you guys. I'm so glad everyone joined me today. It has been so fun. I just wanna finish up this word and then I will close everything down. Um, definitely make sure that you, you stay tuned throughout the day. We're gonna have a ton of great artists all day. Lots of fun, fun streams happening. You can either chime in, you can do the work and lurk, whatever works for you. Um, again, if you are on YouTube and you're watching and you're trying to chat in the YouTube box, none of us are gonna see it. So make sure you come over and join us on Behance um, because that's where the party is and that's where the cool kids hang. So here we are. I have, this is what I managed to get done in addition to this laying out the quote. So I'm gonna have to finish that in the next few hours um 
which I will do in time. And so, yeah, this has been a great day. Don't forget to tune in. Like, we're going to have a fantastic time. It's, um, we're going to be back, to, I'm going to be back tomorrow, um, as will everyone else, but definitely stay tuned. We've got Voodoo Val up next for the Photoshop Daily Challenge, and we all love Val. She's fantastic. I think you're going to have a fantastic time. And then stay tuned for Anna Davis Court, as well as um, Paul Tranny, and everyone else after that. It's going to be a great day. And I think you guys, we've had a ton of fun. I've had fun. Um, I'm so glad that I am here and that you guys joined me. It was a great day. So stay tuned. I will see you tomorrow. Hang out with everyone else for the rest of the day. I'll pop in and out um, so you'll see me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys have a great day.